Telecameras three and four working. Activate radio contact with the outside. Love, wisdom, abundant life. Live a life filled with meaning, purpose, and a sense of accomplishment. Can you hear me? Welcome to the teachings of Enoch. I'm your host, James Allen. Listen every week at this time on KKVV AM 1060 Las Vegas. You can listen online at KKVV.com, on your smartphone using the TuneIn radio app, or listen anytime at teachingsofenoch.com. You can contact me by sending a text message to 702-483-7769. That's 702-483-7769. Or online at teachingsofenoch.com. Let's get started with today's message. Have you ever heard of self-efficacy? Self-efficacy is your and my belief in our abilities and our capabilities to produce a predetermined result. It might be a task that we need to do, like repairing something or a project that we need to finish. Or it could be a long-term goal, like a career goal, a business goal, or a personal goal. Self-efficacy influences the goals that we set for our Selves, the choices we make, the effort that we put into getting something done, and how long we persist at something when we face problems and obstacles, even when there's a chance of failure. You know, I guess if I were to sum up self efficacy, it would be the way we perceive our ability to get something done. A few years ago, my oldest daughter was hired to be the DJ and MC at a wedding reception. She had worked with me a lot in the past. She knew the agenda, how it should go. She knew the type of music needed to make a wedding reception fun and memorable. But this was her first solo wedding reception. She would do all the talking. And she was going to keep that wedding reception on track by announcing the grand entrance, all the special dances, and all of the events that make a wedding reception fun. I helped her set up the sound system. And then after it was all set up, I told her, the show is now yours. And I took a place in the back of the room and sat down. When all the guests had arrived and the wedding party was to make their formal grand entrance, she was all ready to announce them into the room. When she turned off the music and then turned on the microphone, she froze. She tried to get the words out, but she just couldn't do it. She looked at me embarrassed and I I smiled back at her and I, I gave her a look like, Honey, you... You can do this. You know, at that point, a couple of things could have happened. She could have broke down and cried and just run out of the room. And I could have easily stepped in and taken over. Or she could have just stood there nervous, embarrassed. And everyone would have thought, well, she's kind of young and she gave it her best shot. But here's what really happened. She looked down for a few seconds, got herself together. She looked at the bridal party waiting outside the room. She smiled. And then she started welcoming them and announcing them into the room. Everyone smiled. And the bridal party made their grand entrance with my beautiful daughter announcing each of the bridal party by name as they entered into the room. The bride and groom enjoyed the most precious day of their lives, celebrating their wedding day. The mother of the bride, later at the end of the reception, gave my daughter a nice gratuity and over the course of a year, hired my daughter for two more wedding receptions for her other two daughters. Our belief in what we can 
and cannot accomplish is determined by us. You know, there's certain limits placed upon us by our own mind in past situations that we confront. When new situations arise, we push ourselves past those limits and grow, or we hit those limits like a brick wall, and we really don't go beyond them. And I know a lot of people like that. In the book of Genesis, the author writes, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. The word subdue here means to overcome and conquer by force. And it also means to bring under mental and emotional control. You see, you and I are created with enormous potential. I bring up this passage in Genesis because it lays out the foundation of our potential. Many studies over the years show that when someone has authority over us, whether it be a parent, mentor, supervisor, and they give us a goal to reach, psychologically we feel that we can reach that goal. We might feel stress, sure, we might worry about can we do it, but deep down inside we feel that we can attain the goal because someone had enough faith in our ability to give us that goal in the first place. And if someone provided that goal for us in the first place, then they must have felt that we could achieve it.
problems, setbacks, frustrations, injustices, you know, seemingly impossible problems. You and I really must have a solid sense of our capacity and ability to overcome any obstacle in order to reach our goals. Because really, we have two choices, don't we? We have either we're going to reach our potential or we're not. We can forsake our dreams and become cynical when problems arise and, and just say it's too hard. Or we can find the strength to press ahead. People who understand their capacity approach hard and difficult tasks as challenges to be mastered rather than just some threat to be avoided. They set challenging goals and maintain a strong commitment to those goals. Instead of backing down, they put more faith, more effort, and determination into getting things accomplished. If they fail, they recover and examine where it was they went wrong. They can recover from failure quickly and they they think maybe if I study or uh, do things a little differently, they, they do self-examination rather than thinking they're just some worthless person and will never move beyond their limitations. This kind of person feels that failure is really due to a lack of effort or they need to get some additional skills or additional knowledge. And they improve themselves until they get those skills or that knowledge they need. And really this type of outlook and this type of life brings personal accomplishment and satisfaction and it actually reduces stress and lowers our vulnerability to depression. On the other hand, people who doubt their capabilities really shy away from difficult tasks because they see them as some kind of a personal threat. They don't have very high aspirations. They're low and they have goals, but they really have a very weak commitment to those goals. And when difficult tasks come along, they dwell on their personal shortcomings and, and all the things that can go wrong, the obstacles they'll face, what will happen when and if they fail. And they think about all these things rather than concentrating on how to perform these goals and tasks successfully. They tend to give up very quickly in the face of difficulties. And when failures do come, they're very slow to recover. They just view their performance as something that's personally wrong with them, and they limit themselves. For them, failure is not something really to be learned from, but another reason to show just how really inadequate they are. And they lose faith. And they fall very easily into stress and depression because it just weighs on them. Why am I like this? I'll never be able to do these things.
Testament scriptures reveal the history of a very interesting man by the name of Elijah. Elijah had tremendous faith in his ability to be used by God, and he was never one really to back down from a challenge. And some of the ways that God used him were by having faith in God, he caused a drought that lasted over three years. He raised a widow's only son from the dead. He called out the phony pagans and worshipers of man-made idols of the day by challenging them to a contest between the real God and the ones they made up. During this contest, he called fire out of heaven, which burned up their altar. And he spoke out against the corrupt and cruel King Ahab and predicted the death of all of the king's sons. And he also called out fire out of heaven a group of, against a group of soldiers who were supposed to take him and bring him back to that corrupt king. Elijah was really a person who understood his capacity and his ability to get things done. He looked forward to challenges and he looked forward to seeing God work through him. But then something happened to Elijah. He faced a challenge that he felt he couldn't conquer. It was like he hit a brick wall. There was a very evil and cruel queen named Jezebel, and she swore that she would kill him. Now, this wasn't anything new to Elijah before because he had been threatened. But this time, when he found out that Queen Jezebel made a plot against his life, he ran. He ran for his life. He ran and he hid out in the sticks. And this is what's recorded in the first book of Kings. And this is what he did. He went himself a day's journey out into the wilderness. He came and he sat down under a broom tree. He prayed that he might die. And he said, It's enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my dead ancestors. Now, here's a man that called fire down out of heaven, destroyed enemy soldiers, raised someone from the dead, and now he feels like the next challenge is just too difficult. Elijah feels like he might as well be dead. He's, he's so depressed, and he no longer has faith in the ability that God has certainly blessed him with. Have you ever felt like that? Your past accomplishments, no matter what they are, just don't even seem to matter. All you can think of is now, today, in spite of everything else that God has brought you through, you are a failure. How did Elijah overcome his depression and his sense of failure. Well, the passage goes on to tell us that God demonstrated his power and love to Elijah through a powerful windstorm, an earthquake, fire, and personal communication. God gave Elijah his confidence back. When he was broken, defeated, felt like he couldn't go on anymore, God was there. In the New Testament, Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, writes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There are a few ways you and I can develop our efficacy, our capacity to get things accomplished and push ourselves beyond self-imposed limits. Now, first of all, use experiences to learn from, not to drag you down. If you failed, and you will, we all will fail. We're not perfect, but we don't focus on our limitations, but rather what you can do next time. Also, find good role models, people you admire. Find out how they got to where they are now. Keep in mind that Look, people are not perfect. 
But as a Christ follower, our best and foremost role model is Christ himself. Also follow those whom you admire and take their good behaviors and their good qualities, apply them to your life. Thirdly, surround yourself with people that share your same values, negative, discouraging, and those who pursue destructive lifestyles and self-admitted failures. Guess what? They're only going to drag you down. Finally, study the scriptures and discover how God worked in the lives of other people. The great classical musician Stravinsky was laughed at and he was run out of town by the Parisians and the critics when he first performed the beautiful Rite of Spring. Two major record labels rejected the Beatles. Why? This is what they said. We don't like their sound and groups of electric guitars, well, they're a passing fad. What's going on? What are they stopping for? Love, wisdom, abundant life. That's my hope for you. You've been listening to The Teachings of Enoch. I'm James Allen, your host. You can contact me by sending a text message to 702-483-7769. That's 702-483-7769. Or online at teachingsofenoch.com. Com. You can listen to this program every week at the same time on KKVV AM 1060 Las Vegas. You can listen online at KKVV.com on your smartphone using the TuneIn radio app or listen anytime at teachingsofenoch.com.